Hi there! In this video, we are going to learn how to implement univariate gauge model in Excel with the help of Pixel. So Pixel is a useful Excel add-in that enables Excel user to run Python code on Excel environment. Since I have already installed Pixel add-in, as you can see here, now I will just have to write a gauge model in Python module. And if you guys have any question about how to install Pixel, please check the link below. So now we're going to use PyCharm environment to help us to build a gauge model using Python code. At the end, we will use this code to interact with our Excel environment. But before diving into the coding session, I would like to explain a little bit about Gatch model and its use cases. So Gatch model is used to analyze and forecast volatility of assets. In finance, we want to measure volatility of financial assets, such as individual stock or indices. Knowing vo volatility of assets at specific point in time would help us to make a better decisions on whether to buy or sell assets or adjust portfolio correspondingly. Now that we have understand what the Gatch model is, the next step is to go through the coding section on how to write a Gatch model using Python code. So the first step is to install the Arch package. So I'm going to use pip to install this package. So pip install arch. And another package that we need is pandas to organize our data. So pip install pandas. Okay, so now we are done with installing. We are going to import the arch model library from the arch package. From arch import arch model. And we also need to import the pandas package. The next step is to write a function. So I'm going to name my function Gatch Parameters. Gatch Parameters. And this function take in the random array and we return the data frame with all the information about our parameters of the Gatch model. I'm going to create a random variable called AM which call in the Arch model library. I'm going to pass this random array to the library arch model. Now I want to fit this model res equal am dot fit. So this res variable here contains the information about the arch model. So it contains the parameters, it contains the forecasted value, it contains the predictive value. But in our case, we only care about the parameters of our catch model. So I am going to create another variable called parameters. And I'm calling this rest to only give me the parameters instead of something else. So I'm going to call rest.params. Next, I'm going to create a empty data array. And I want to pass each parameters into this data array. So I'm going to use the loop method to do this. So for i element in enumerate, I'm going to pass the parameters in. And I'm going to append each element in the parameters into the date empty data array. So data append elements. Next, we are going to create our data frame. So we are going to need the pandas package. I'm going to call our data frame df pandas.dataframe. I'm going to pass in the data to our data frame. Also, I'm going to name our data frame columns parameters. Pass in the data. Now we have to index our data frame. So this parameters here is actually a data frame. It has the index. And in this case, the index is the name of our parameters. So we can reuse the index 
of these variable parameters and put that those index into our data frames. So I'm going to call df.index equal to parameters.index. All right, so we are done with the function. We just need to return this data frame. Now we are going to test our get model function. I'm going to create a random variable from 1 to 9 just to test for this. And I'm going to call in our catch parameter function, which you're going to print out the results. Now I'm going to run it. This is our data frame. Returns with all the parameters with mean, omega, alpha, and beta. So our function works. So now the question is, how do we move this function and implement this function in Excel environments? So that is where Pixel comes in. Pixel will take this function and allows it to use in Excel environments. So to do this, we are going to need the Pixel package. And we are going to need the Excel func library from the Pixel package. So from Pixel, we are going to import Excel func. So Excel func is a decorator which allows Pixel to recognize the Python code and move it or implement it into the Excel environment. So we have to declare this as XL func. Now we are going to let Pixel know what is the argument that we're taking in and what is the return is supposed to be in Excel. So we're going to take in the float array 1D array from Excel, and then we want to return the data frame as we see in Python here. This data frame we return in Excel environment, and we want the index to be true because that is our parameter names. So now it's done. Now we just get this code updated, and now when we go to the Excel, we can use this function now. Let me illustrate that in Excel. So I just close and reopen my Excel environments. So after I do that, the code from PyCharm environment will automatically import to Pixel. But if you guys don't want to close and reopen the Excel environment, you guys can just reload Pixel within the Excel environment. So I'm going to use, go to this pixel example tab right here and I'm going to reload pixel. So after this, any updated code will get imported into Excel environment. So I'm going to create a random array just like what we did in by charm. So from 1 to 9, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. So this should return the same result as we see in bycharm. So I'm going to call in our function get parameters. And then I'm going to pass in this array right here. It should return the same as what we see. So I'm going to press enter. As you guys see here, it returned the same result as we did in bycharm. All right, so now we are going to load the real data into the Excel environment and we are going to use our GATCH parameters function to get us the parameters of the GATCH model. And I'm going to show you a very interesting thing of Pixel is the Jupyter Notebook connection. So as you guys can see here, if I click on this one, it will automatically open the Jupyter Notebook. So I have my notebook here open and I have already written the code. So one of the advantage of the Jupyter Notebook is it gives you the very quick interaction with Excel environments. But the disadvantage is it doesn't automatically import the code for you. So every time you want this code to 
this function to be displayed in Excel environment, you have to run the notebook again. So let me illustrate that point. So as you see here, I have the SMB 500 data function already written as similar in the bycharm environment. However, this function is not displayed in Excel environment yet because I haven't run the notebook. All right, so if I type in SP500, so there is no data, so there's no function called SP500. But if I run this, if I click on this and I run this, then SP500 data, which is the function, will get imported to Excel environment. So now I type in SP500 data. As you can see here, it's already displayed in the Excel environment. So if you want the code, the Python code to automatically import it into Excel environment without reloading it every time, you have to write this code in by charm environment instead of in Jupyter. So now I want to walk you guys through the code that I have already written here in Jupyter Notebook. And I have erased some of the unnecessary code. So we are leaving with this. So first we need to import the Excel func as we did in the bar charm environment because we need this Excel func from pixel for pixel to recognize this is the function that will be used in Excel environments. And also I need to load the, the historical data from the SMB 500 and that data is actually contained in the arch package. So I'm going to import arch.data.smb500 and I'm going to name this library arch data. Right, so now I'm going to start writing the SMB 500 function. So I'm going to load the historical data of SMB 500 as archdata.load and this data here contains many columns such as date, opening price, high price, and low price of the day, but we only need the adjusted close column. And then I'm going to convert the adjusted close column into the percentage change. And similarly in my charm environment, I'm going to be a, a empty array which is going to pass each element in this return into this return valve empty array writing for i in returns which is the element in this returns i is each element in this returns and then i want to just append this into the return value empty array after that i'm just gonna create the balance data frame and return that data frames one note here is that because we don't take into any argument in the function, so the XL func decorator doesn't have something in the front, but we do need to return a data frame with the index equal false. After the colon, we're just gonna say, okay, pixel, return me with the data frame. Okay, now, so let's we actually load our data, SMB 500 data, and we are going to find the parameters for that data. So I'm going to load this data. And then I can call in the function gatch parameters, which I have already written in Python. So I'm going to call in gatch parameters. Since this gatch parameter function taking the array, right? So we're just going to pass the array in and then we return us with the values for our parameters. So mu, omega, alpha, and beta 1. So now we're going to need to create a function that will take in the array and returns us with the predicted value of our gatch model. I have already written the code here. The function called conditional vault predict. So we just need to run it and export this code to our Excel environment. So after I run it, now I'm going to call this function conditional vault predict. And then this function take in the array. So I'm going to pass this returns array into this function and it should return us with the conditional volatility of our catch model.
So as you can see here, it's returned us with the conditional volatilities from our GATCH model based on these parameters. So let's us go back to our SB fire data function. So this SB fire data function only return us with the SB fire data, but we would like to generalize the, this function a little bit. We would like to create a function that would take the string argument and then return us with the information based on that strings. For instance, if I want to get the information of the financial te uh, technologies stock exchange, then I can pass these strings to the function and then it return me with uh, the information of the financial tech stock exchange. Similarly, if I want the information of the IBM, then I can pass this string to the function and then it should return me with the information on the IBM stock. So let's we move to our Jupyter Notebook. I have the code already written in Jupyter Notebook. So the package that we need for this to work is Pandas Data Reader. And we also need the package called Datam so we can declare the beginning period and the end of the period. So first, let's go to our data load function. I'm going to start the data with the year of 2000 and I'm going to end it with the year of 2014. So there's 14 years difference. So we return us with the daily price of the stock exchange and everything else in our code will stay the same, similarly to other functions. So now I'm going to run this in Jupyter Notebook so that this function can be exported to Excel environment. Now, I want to use this data load function in Excel. I'm going to change this SP file to data load function. And then let's just pass the IBM argument into the function. As you can see, the information got updated as well as our parameters based on the new information. Now, suppose I want to get the S&P 500 data from the Yahoo Finance. So I'm just going to pass in this argument right here. And then it returns me with the new information about S&P 500 data. The last feature that I want to show you guys is called the plot feature from Pixel Package. This is a very cool feature that it helps us to visualize data and plotting graph in a quick and efficient way. So let me illustrate that point. So I have the code written here. We need to import the plot library from the pixel package. And similarly to other functions, we need to have a decorator for pixel to recognize and import this function into Excel. So for the decorator, we're going to pass in the random array. Next, we are going to write a function and I call this function plot A, which take in the random array call data and then I create a data frame I name the column volatilities and then I using the platform pixel to plot the graph so let's see an interaction in Excel now I want to plot the volatility data as you can see the graph just got plot very quickly and now I want to see how it's got updated when I change the parameters of the returns. So now we are having the S&P 500 data. I want to change it into IBM. So as you can see that after I change the information of the returns, the graph just got updated automatically. There are many other functionality on the plot library from the pixel package but I will spend another video to talk about those functionalities. Thank you for watching the video.